Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about static attributes in classes in C Sharp. Now, a static attribute is basically a special type of attribute in a class which is shared by all of the objects and all of the instances of that class. So a static attribute is technically an attribute that is contained on the class itself instead of on the individual objects of that class. And I'm gonna sort of explain to you how this works. Um, over here in my program, I actually created a class and it's called song. And this class basically just models a song in our program. So it's kind of like a blueprint for what a song should be in our program. Songs have a title, an artist, and a duration. And then down here, I just have this basic constructor which uh, allows the caller to create the object right up front. So over here in my program, I created two songs. One's called Holiday, one's called Cashmere. Uh, this is Holiday by Green Day, and I just said it was 200 seconds, and then Cashmere by Led Zeppelin, 150 seconds. So we have our two song objects, and I wanna show you guys how we can actually create a static attribute on this song class. So one thing I wanna point out is there's these normal attributes that we have over here on this song class, like the title, the artist, and the duration. If I was to come down here and print these out, so for example, I could come down here and I could print out holiday.title, and then right after it, I could also print out cashmere.title. And if I was to do this, you'll notice that both of these objects have different titles. So the first object's title is holiday, the second is cashmere. I could do the same thing for the other attributes. So if I came down here and said holiday.artist and cashmere.artist, they're gonna have different artists, right? In other words, there's two different values that are assigned to the attributes of those objects, right? So when I create an object in my program, I'm basically allowing it to have its own title, its own artist, and its own duration. So each individual object will have their own title, their own artist, and their own duration, right? Those things are gonna differ across all of the objects. And that is what we would consider a normal attribute. But there's another type of attribute which is called a static attribute. And a static attribute is an attribute that isn't unique to each one of the objects. In other words, a static attribute is an attribute about the actual class. So this title attribute, like I said, it's different for each of the objects. So holiday.title and cashmere.title, those are different values. But a static attribute is gonna be the same across all of the objects of a class. In fact, a static attribute is basically just an attribute that we would say is about the class. So let me show you guys um, basically what this is. I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna create a static attribute. And you can create it similar to these ones. I can just say public static. So I'm using this static keyword here. And then I'm gonna give it a type and I'm just gonna call this song count. And basically what this variable is gonna do is it's gonna tell us how many song objects have been created. So I'm just gonna set this equal to zero initially. So I'm giving it an initial value. Now I wanna show you guys what we can actually do with this static variable. Because we have this static attribute, I could actually come over here and instead of saying like holiday.artist, I could actually say song.songCount. And I could actually print this out. So I'm gonna print this out and you'll see that we should just get zero because that's what I set it to initially. So unlike the artist, the title, and the duration, the song count attribute is actually on this class. So I couldn't say song.title because title isn't an attribute that's associated with song. And you'll see down here we're getting this error. I couldn't say song.artist because artist is going to apply to the objects of the class, not the class itself. But I can say song.songCount because this is a static attribute, which, it's, which it means it belongs to the class. So that's kind of the difference. And I wanna show you guys um, something that we could actually do. So over here I have my constructor, right? This is a constructor method. It's a very simple constructor. Anytime that we create a song object, so anytime a song object gets created, this method gets called. It's a guarantee, right? Um, basically, when I come over here and I say new song, this is me calling that constructor. So anytime we create one of these songs, it's gonna get called. So what I'm gonna do down here is every time we create a song, in other words, after all this code in the constructor, I'm just gonna increment the song count. So I'm gonna say song count plus plus. 
So basically what's gonna happen is every single time a song object gets created, the song count is gonna get incremented. So let me show you guys how this is gonna work. Over here, I'm actually just going to, I'm gonna get rid of this guy. And I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in between here. So in between ho the creating holiday and creating cashmere, we're printing out the song count. So let's see what happens. What we should get is one and two. So basically when we create holiday, and then we print out the song count, one song's been created, so we get a one over here. Then we create this cashmere object, and so that song count's gonna get incremented again, and here we get two. So this static attribute is telling us information not about the specific objects themselves, but about the class in general, right? So I can figure out how many objects have been created of the song class, right? How many instances of the song class have been created in my program? But that's not a piece of information that is going to be specific to the holiday object or to the cashmere object. That is a piece of information that's gonna be specific to the class itself. And that's basically what a static class attribute is. It's an attribute about the class, not about the specific objects of the class. So it's basically an attribute that we store to kind of you know, give us information about that class. And you can create uh, static attributes. You can create as many as you want. And honestly, they can be really useful. And you'll notice that whenever we access them, we don't say like, I wouldn't say like cashmere dot song count. Like I'm, I'm not gonna be able to do that. Um, so we have to access it through the actual class. Now, one thing that we could do is we could create a method. So I could come over here and I could create a method. So I could say like public get song count and Actually, this is gonna return an integer. And then over here, I could actually return the song count. So I could say like, and now we're actually gonna be able to access the song count on each of our individual objects. So I could technically come down here and say, cashmere dot get song count. And now we'll be able to get the song count um, off of one of those objects. So you'll see now that we can get two, just like we did before. So you can either just create a static attribute and access it using like song.songCount like I did over here, or you could create a getter method like get song count, and then the individual objects could access that. And both of those can be uh, pretty useful. Um, sometimes you're gonna want the objects to be able to have access to those static attributes. But that's sort of an overview of static attributes and really that static keyword. And actually, as we go forward, I'm gonna show you uh, some other cool stuff we can do with that static keyword. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.